there's a certain reverence in how we treat our shiny math rocks in the tabletop role-playing game community, so today let's talk about dice. Hey fellow Game Masters, I'm Richard Quiner. welcome back to the RPG Daily, your daily dose of all things tabletop role-playing games, helping you build your world and master your game. Today's video is a little different, I know I still need to do a series on the Paladins, but today I want to take a minute to talk about dice. I wanted to kind of show my appreciation and share some understanding of these little rocks that bring randomness and some great storytelling to our tables. If we really wanted to do an in-depth dive into a lot of parts of dice, we could do that. We could make whole videos on the history and the uses of dice in the past, but this one is more of an overview just to, to gain a little bit of knowledge. So first, let's start off with the history of dice. Even though we don't know where the first dice came from, we do know that dice have been used since the beginning of recorded history. So it's been a long time. Some believe that the original dice were used in fortune telling rituals, and a lot of times the belief is they were made out of the ankle bones of animals, which they're very small kind of little delicate bones that are in the ankles. We have them too. They could have used human bones. Back between 3000 BC and 200 AD, the Egyptians played a game called Senate that used a, a rudimentary dice, a two-sided stick that they would flip over and roll, roll. That was an early form of dice dating back 3000 BC, so we know they've been around for a while. Speaking of historical dice, there have been dice excavated in southeastern Iran dating back 2800 BC to 2500 BC, so very old in that area. In Scotland, they found a dice dating back to around 3100 BC to 2400 BC, and in Pakistan, they found dice dating back to 2500 BC to 1900 BC. So you can see from that, dice had been a part of every culture basically since the beginning of time as a way to add some randomness. A lot of times this did refer to games that they would play, and they just became a part of every culture. It is also often thought of that dice were the predecessor to playing cards and dominoes. Being a much more rudimentary form, they could play different games, but then that could then evolve into dominoes, which we know are, are similar to dice in some ways, and then playing cards, which can be equally random depending on how they're how well they're shuffled. So keeping all that in mind, using dice in our tabletop games is really just keeping an ancient tradition alive, which I think is pretty great. Dice are random, right? That's what we all know, and we say dice keep things fresh by always giving us a different random number or the same number repeatedly until it's driving us crazy, depending on how many nat ones you roll. Statistically speaking, if you were to take a six-sided die and roll that die 600 times, you would have each number would appear 100 times of those rolls. It would have a more even kind of randomness to it if it truly was random, but we also know there are other factors that play into how well a dice roll. Largely superstition, if a dice is cursed by someone, that will have a big impact on your numbers. The thing I wanted to mention though is there are in fact several methods that have been used over time to impact the rolls of dice. These methods are called the dice control and they've actually been around pretty much since the beginning of dice as people have tried to not only play into the luck and the randomness of the dice, but also bend the dice to their favors. More recently, the craps community where people are betting money and trying to earn money through the dice has led to people using these methods. One of these methods is how you grip the dice before you roll it. Depending on how, if the dice is flat on your hand, which number you have up or facing upward, which even if you have dice touching each other can all impact how random the roll would be, which means it could be manipulated to give favorable results. Another method was when rolling a die, it was common to try and make the die land on a face of the die instead of a corner, because that would limit the amount of bouncing and rolling that it would do, giving you much more of a chance to have a good result on that die. Another thing people did would try to put a backspin on the die when they roll it in order to counteract some of the other random effects, the backspin would allow them to have some control over it. Were these methods actually useful? Yes. They were so effective, in fact, that casinos over the years had to put in rules at their craps tables that a player would have to bounce the dice off of a wall of the table before it settled in order for that to count. 
this was to counteract this dice control manipulation that some really good players would use. But here's the thing, in tabletop role-playing games, there's no such thing as a bad roll. There are such things as bad rolls, but with bad rolls comes good stories sometimes as we fail forwards in our storytelling. Sometimes it's okay to have those bad rolls, so what we really strive to find is true randomness in the dice. If you really think about it, people back in the day, they invented dice, they invented ways to manipulate the die rolls, but they also, yes, invented the ways to have more random die rolls because the dice tower was actually invented or dates back to around the 4th century AD. The dice tower was actually a pretty common thing in Rome, apparent according to some historical papers. I'll have some papers linked in the description so you can read up on what I read on this. And in those times, these dice towers were designed to create more random results from the rolls, trying to bypass the, quote, cheating, the manipulation of the dice, allowing people to drop a die into a tower. It would bounce off of several paddles and then give a result that was truly random because there was no manipulation from the roller themselves. In fact, two... In fact, there are actually two ancient dice towers in museums. One was found in Rome and one was found in Germany that look very similar to what we use nowadays. I haven't looked into it, but it's very possible that these ancient dice towers impacted the design of dice towers that we use. All this brings me to the product I wanted to show you guys today. This is a dice tower that was designed and created by one of the community members Ray from Got DM. I interviewed him a while back on this channel with the Game Master's Craft. He has created this dice tower box system called Roaming Player Gear. The link to it will be in the description. But this thing is pretty rad, and I wanted to show this off to you guys. The Roaming Player Dice Tower and Dice Vault set is a pretty sturdy chunk of RPG gear that I personally can't wait to take it out to my in-version games when I someday get to go back to those. Historically, I've never really subscribed to being a dice tower person. I've always thought maybe my rolls are just poor because I have bad luck. Maybe it's because I bounce them off. Sometimes they bounce off of a neoprene surface. Anything like that, maybe. And now after doing my research for this video, I'm thinking maybe I'm just that bad with my rolling methods. So I'm going to start using a dice tower when I have to roll real dice. I have in all honesty, use digital dice more often lately just because it's a little quicker. But with real dice, when in-person games, this is what I'm going to start using. The Roman player gear set includes a dice vault and a tower. The tower, both of them are made out of nice hardwood, comparable to the wormwood products that are out there. But in my opinion, these are a little more sturdy. The wood felt a little more firm, like it could actually take a beating because accidents do happen. I do have a Wormwood Dice Vault, but honestly, I wouldn't take that anywhere because I don't want it to get messed up. This is one I think I could throw in my gear, take it with me, and I'm not really worried about it getting damaged because I think it can hold up to its own. The Dice Tower itself is not come assembled, but it does fit together really well with just some magnets. You throw it all together, put the tower into the dice tray that it comes with, and you're ready to start rolling. The piece de resistance of this whole system that I think is really cool is the inspiration coin. If you're like me, I end up handing out inspiration like hotcakes, depending on the situation and depending on the players. And then I tend to forget which players have inspiration and if I haven't, if any players have inspiration at all for that matter. And then my players end up getting about 10 to 20 inspirations in a game and they just roll with advantage all night and it becomes a lot. With the inspiration coin, you can just pull the coin right off of the dice tower, chuck it at one of your players to give them inspiration, and just wait until you have it back to give it to someone else, or just realize that someone has inspiration because you don't have your coin anymore. And it's a pretty solid chunk of metal that you could probably do some damage with if you threw it hard enough. Another great thing about this is it all comes neatly packaged with a nice leather strap that wraps around it. So when you do pull it out, everyone will go, ooh, what is that? And want to look at it and delay the start of the game because everyone's looking at your nice shiny dice tower. Like I said, it's a great product from a great creator in the community who has made this great company and built a great world that he's playing in. And I really think you should check it out if you are inclined to get a dice tower. The link for that will be in the description. I hope this video has been informational as well as a little, I know it was a plug, but in all honesty, 
I got the dice tower, it was really nice, I wanted to make the video about it. But I hope you learned something new about dice and where they came from and this great tradition that we all share in when we're playing our tabletop role-playing games. I've been Richard, thanks for watching.